Well, apart from hitting it dead straight uh, <laughs> and hitting the windows we want, yeah. um, that was pretty good for a start. Okay. All right, how's it going guys? David, Worldwide Golf Shops here at the Golf Mart at Del Mar. I'm with Harry, the Pro Equipment Manager at Wilson Golf. What's up, man? Pleasure to be here with you. Pleasure. What are we looking at today? Uh, so today we're going to go through the DynaPower launch. So we've got two different types of drivers. We've got irons, we've got fairway wedge, we've got hybrids. And then we've got the uh, old-fashioned DynaPower iron, just for right. your sneak peek. Uh, right. It's the iron that changed the industry, honestly. Absolutely, and yeah. We did that by doing a little bit of uh, magic in the hosel and, and redistributing that weight out on that toe to give that a little bit more ball speed. All right, excited to see it. Let's, uh, let's get started. Let's get it. All right, so two different driver models. We didn't go for five or six like some of our competitors because it can get a little confusing sure. over time. So what we've done is we've got all of the uh, consumers okay. and put them into two drivers. So if I start with a titanium, yep. so if I'm throwing that one, we've got a 16 gram weight for maximum MMY. So what that means for the consumer is you're gonna get forgiveness. So okay, yep. the more weight at the back, even if you hit it off the toe, heel, or whatever, you're gonna get the most out of it and most stable. So it's gonna be within that dispersion pattern. Okay. We've also moved the CG location into the middle and slightly heel bias. So okay. it's a slight draw bias, sure. but only subtle. Would help a ton of golfers out there. A hundred percent. So you kind of eliminate that right-hand side if you're that left to right fader. Sure. So good CG location with slight heel back with a maximum weight at there for maximum MOI and yep. more forgiveness. When it comes to the carbon, this is your like your Ferrari, right? This is like your, your go-to if you are a high spin guy. The carbon is on the toe, and then when you flip it over, you've got it on the crown too. Right. So we are allowed to save all that weight sure. and redistribute it in a different way. Of course. So with this, the CG, with other models, to get a low spin head, they push it so far forward. Right. You get that high toe hit. Of course. And then it just falls out Dives of the sky. Out. Yeah. Exactly. With this, we've moved it slightly further back. So it's not up against the face, but it's in the, kind of this location here. Okay. So it gives that maximum in that 2,000 to 2,400 range. Right. With a 10 to 14 degree of launch. Okay. And then we've got a 12 gram weight at the back to give you that little bit more stability without offsetting the maximum weight at the front. Right. Of so, course. all in all, we've got that fantastic combination of perfect weight positions sure. to optimize launch conditions. Okay. And what I really like about both of these models is if you miss hit it, Sometimes you go up to three and a half thousand revs, you go up in the sky and fall straight down with that right. percent angle. Yep. With this, everything is within range of, say, even on the worst hits, like it's going down to about 1900. Okay, yep. And then going up to about 29. So wow. it's it's really tight dispersion on yeah, that spin. That's great. And even on those high toe shots, you're not really getting that dippy, loopy one going down. Yeah, and the shape looks great too. Is there a, is there a size difference between the two? No, so it's pretty much exactly the same. It's slightly more compact at the back here okay. with a little bit more elongated at the back to accommodate a little bit heavier weight and okay. a little bit better aerodynamics. But when you look at it from a, a, a front, very similar. Yep. You're just going to get the carbon, carbon for that carbon. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And then you've obviously got that red line all the way around the on the back to give that a little bit more of a visual. Okay. With the carbon, you don't have that because you already have that carbon already around that. Right, okay. And we got a little tweak in there. I don't know if you can notice the smallest detail around here, but you might see it on that one. I'm not, yeah, I'm not too sure. So with that, it says, let it fly. Okay, yep. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna tee him up. <laughs> let it fly. And we're gonna let it fly. Sounds good, let's do it. Yeah, man. All right, so what are we gonna look at? All right, we're gonna get you dialed in right now. So, all right, so let's start off with a, a general conversation of launch. Do you launch it high, medium, low? Where are you? I would say I'm on the lower end of things. My launch tends to be around like 10.5, I would say. Okay. So I know that I could launch it higher. I get a bit of a heel miss, kind of low heel. And that so jumps up the spin a little it bit? Definitely does, yeah. Does it go above that 3,000 threshold? On occasion it can. Okay. Um, it would kind of depend, I guess, how low and how heel yeah, yeah. that is, but yeah. Okay, uh, when it comes to general spin, where are you in like spin rate? Um, I would say on good hits, I'm between 2,000 and 2,500. On that miss, it's gonna, I'll see, a, you know, 3,300, okay. somewhere around there, yep. All right, so all these questions I'm asking you is already going in my mind, and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm thinking, all right, I'm gonna go towards this one, this one. <laughs> but the biggest question for you is, 
do you how far do you how hard do you load that shaft so do you end up coming up here and then yanking the club down and then releasing or are you pretty smooth all the way through i would say i'm more smooth actually my okay. tendency is to load and kind of let it fall which might get me stuck at, on sometimes so okay. but i'm not a very like aggressive Jerky, yes yeah. yes okay perfect so what you just said to me i'm gonna try off try you in the carbon head okay with probably i mean i've seen you be warming up you're you you're quite a quick speed swing speed so <laughs> i'm already gonna put you into like a uh 6x or a 7x depending on the way you load and the numbers that we come out with uh so we're going to start with carbon perfect uh but the good thing about it is both of these models you're not one or the other you could fall into either category absolutely it's about so you could performance either, right you might be a drawer and still fall into the titanium because okay. of the way you load the shaft and unload the shaft just because it's a slight draw bias doesn't mean it's eliminating right. those drawers of the golf ball. So right. I'm gonna start with carbon. Cool. And then we'll get cracking and see Perfect. what we got. Sounds great. I'm gonna put you in standard right now. Okay. Uh, graphite design, we got a DI7X. So it's a stock shaft. It's, yep. it's a pretty pretty big boy right there, yep. but I've seen you swing it before. It's just That's warming up and you know. Yeah, you sounds good. Give me a run for my money. All right, sounds good. Well, apart from hitting it dead straight uh, <laughs> and hitting the windows we want, yeah. um, that was pretty good, good for a start. Okay. <laughs> so just for one swing, what's your normal ball speed that you're in, in, um, into? I would say right now I'm around 160 pretty consistently if I get it good. My 160, like, yep. that kind of area. Well, yep. you hit 161 on your first swing of the day, <laughs> uh, carrying it 270, offline forward, four degrees left. That's a good start. Um, so with it, here's where I like about the carbon, right? Is off center hits and off miss hits, you're in a real tight area of dispersion regarding spin. And that was 2,600. So that was pretty close to where we want to be. Right. Once we start ramping it up a little bit more, um, doing a couple of things, tweaks here and there. And just the standard hosel setting? That was, that was straight in. Very That cool. was straight in. So go, keep hitting. Not bad, a little leaky to the right, but that's, it started off straight and then that hurricane wind kind of keeps pushing it. <laughs> yeah, it's moving today. Um, feels good though. I will say I'm familiar with this shaft. Um, yep. I'm playing the UB right now. Okay. Um, but I have this in my three wood. So a familiar feel kind of actually probably great to start with, honestly. Do you feel like it's a little loose at the bottom or? I mean, I feel how active the shaft is. Um, I don't necessarily mind that. I would say with some of the tendencies in my swing, it actually like kind of helps me a little bit more, maybe return return to a square. Yeah, impact. just in case you do get caught a little bit. Right, yeah, absolutely. But you're trying to get away from that, so you're trying to get a little bit more consistent. Right. So consistently, we want to get to that point where it's not going to kick too much. And right here, so when I do fittings, I have a rule of three. So within your degree of launch, so say you launch it at 10, Yep. I'm looking with a, a three degree of dynamic loft. Okay. And, and, and some fitters don't use dynamic loft, in my opinion, as much as they should. Right. Dynamic loft, if you get too much dynamic loft, that means, all right, let's, let's kind of either go a little bit stiffer, sure. a little bit heavier, whatever it may be to get that dynamic loft okay. within those three degrees. Right. So with that dynamic loft that you just gave there, you launched it at, four, uh, at nine degrees with 15 degree of launch, okay. uh, dynamic loft. So, I want to be bringing that down. Okay, so yeah. what I'm going to do is get you a different shaft and then we'll see if we can bring that dynamic launch down and get a little bit more numbers out of there. Sounds great. So with that dynamic loft, is that, I mean, I assuming that is playing into what the shaft is kind of delivering. It can be, okay. it can also be the way you're delivering it. You can flip it, yep. right? So you get your hands underneath. Trying to save it a little bit. Trying to save it or if you're doing that, move it back in your stance just that little bit more because you're hitting a little bit earlier on. Okay. Uh, but then once you're earlier in your arc, you could have that club face open. The more you the more you bring it up, the club face is now pointing left. Sure. You're gonna be drawing it. The more you put it further back and it's gonna change the direction. Yep. So ideally we wanna swing, you want you to swing the way you normally do when right. we fit everything to your towards yep. you. Yep, that makes sense. But I want something potentially a little bit stiffer at okay. that tip end. And I'm staying right now with the graphite design, but this one is the TP7X. Okay, I've actually never tried this one before. So we're gonna see if this brings the dynamic loft down. If it doesn't, I've got a couple more cheeky numbers for you. All right, uh, to hit. 
So you're three degrees up. So I kind of like those numbers for three degrees up. Okay. There was a little bit more penetrating ball flight there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, kind of held its line pretty good. It held it really wind. well. Yeah. 100%. So you launched that at 9.5 with a spin rate of 2,800. So with those three balls that we've just done, you haven't been out the launch window that we want to we, we want to be out of. So okay. we never see a 3000 right now. That's good. That was carry of 271, uh, with ball speed of 164. Okay. That's, so already that's you're kind of like increasing your numbers with your consist. So you said to me you were 160. I would say, yep, kind of average swing, maybe nothing. I'm not trying to get after it, probably one. Yeah, well, that's what we want. Right. And we want to maximize those numbers as we come down. Okay. So what I would like to see is potentially that spin to come down a little bit. Okay. Uh, so get to that left side just that little bit earlier. Okay. There we go. I love how you're drawing it into that like hurricane <laughs> off the yeah. left, but you ended up holding it off and it just ended up doing like that Ben Hogan, that yep. draw and then fade and yeah. let the wind take it. Can hit it both ways. All right, what do you think you had there? Oh, I mean, I felt I had a little more power. Yeah, I felt I had a little more power through the swing there. So probably yep. a little bit faster. Um, I would say impact maybe still felt a little low on the face, but through and through a good swing. All right, so we're getting closer. So the way that you got to that left side without really trying as much, right. we brought the dynamic loft from, so you launched it at 10 and a half okay. and you're at 14 degrees of dynamic loft. So we're in that realm of being real, like my money kind of shot right sure. there. So that was your three degrees from out to in, slight, slightly one of those in to out. Yep. Uh, so slightly over the top, but it's one of those ones that you your face the path and face the target is very relative. So you can control that ball flight, which I really, really like. Right. Are you ready for the numbers? Yes. <laughs> All right, launching at 10 and a half. Okay. Ball speed of 166. All right. 286. Carry. Of carry. Wow. And your spin rate was 2300. Wow. Right. That's. So this is what I'm talking about. Like this is what we're doing with our fittings. Is we're trying to get, trying to listen to what you're saying and sure. and, and dial in the shaft with that head combination, and getting those three degrees of dynamic loft yep. from launch okay. to to relationships with that, and then getting the spin rate. We're getting the maximum out of them. So we're not going up and spinning up and then dropping down. Right. We're coming this way, and then coming down. And what I like about the carbon is it's designed for that penetrating ball flight. Sure. It's it's one of those ones that goes straight through the wind. Clearly, yeah. you can see that we got a, a lot of wind today. I'm, I'm surprised actually that it's holding so well. I mean, seeing kind of the dirt move, right. it's funny, but it's, it's wow. And it's one of those, so we want to maximize the distance of carry and then the rollout that you're gonna get. So with that CG location and forgiveness built in, uh, projecting that inner penetrating ball flight where the right. titanium is slightly higher. Yep. So slightly medium to high ball flight. Okay. For those who lead it a little bit more spin to sure. get up in the air. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I'm do a couple more. Okay. I'm gonna do one more thing after this shot. So I wanna see if that wasn't a fluke. Okay. <laughs> which I'm sure it isn't. We'll, we'll try to replicate. So again, get to that left side, hold that off a little bit more if you can. So kind of get your hands that way. Yep. And then just give it a rip. Nice. Sounded a little bit off, like a miss hit, right? Tad, I mean, it, it feels good though. And right. So your ball speed is slightly down, by, but still 164. So you hit 166, you're 164 and a miss hit. Again, launching that at 10 degrees, 10 and a half degrees and your backspin is 2300 again. So that's two in a row that you've hit 2300. Wow. The only consistent. thing that changed was your ball speed. Sure. And by wow. two miles an hour. And your dynamic loft, we're, we're in three and a half degrees. So we're getting to that okay. magic yep. number. Yes, we are. I'm gonna do one more thing. Okay. I'm gonna tweak this just a little bit. Okay. And then we're gonna jump into the titanium. Sure, see the um, differences there. Because I really do like this, this number for you. Sure. Um, I'm not even gonna try the other shaft, honestly, <laughs> because we're right in the middle yeah. of where we wanna be. That shaft feels great. It's actually my first time trying it, but it seems like the combination of you know that head and that shaft setup has been good. And now we do have we do have that Ventus TR shaft in there. Sure. Have you hit that before? Um, TR blue. I have not hit TR black yet. Okay. You know what? We'll, we'll throw a TR black okay. in there, and then we'll, 
We'll see what cheeky numbers we can get out of yeah, that. Yeah, sounds good. Your dispersion is kind of disgusting. Um, <laughs> good disgusting. Oh, 100% good disgusting. <laughs> I mean, just, I mean, look at these numbers, right? The numbers, the ball flights are pretty much all the exactly the same, yep. but your dispersion. Very tight so far. Uh, it's like eight yards is the max offline. Jeez. It's a good day. It's a good day to be <laughs> it's alive. A, it's a good day. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, that felt good. So what I did, did there is because of our adjustability, right? We've got six way adjustability in the hosel. Okay, yep. I actually cranked it up by a degree, yeah. which closes that face just that little bit. Okay, yep. So if you are playing that windy day and the predominant wind is that left to right, sure. you can hold it against that wind really, really nice without sacrificing that spin. Yeah, that's very cool. So again, that one was launching at 10, 164 ball speed, uh, carrying it. Uh, well, uh, 274. So not too bad, came down a little bit. Yep. And your backspin was 2700. Okay. Overall, these are incredibly tight numbers. And I would say even by, you said you kind of closed the face yeah. a little bit, still pretty square top line. I can't really like see that too much. Sometimes you might- Sometimes you get, if you open that face, it's gonna get that like, so much yep. closed. And then subconsciously you're like- Ooh, Yeah, no, it looks really but square. But the thing about you, you, I didn't tell you because I didn't want to tell you to put that subconscious bias. Of course, yeah. But the fact that you put it down and you couldn't tell if I opened it, closed it, whatever it may yep. be, is that's the design that we wanted to do, go, go yeah. through. So very clean. you get the adjustability benefits and get dialed in while still looking pretty neutral. Yeah, okay. We just got the numbers uh, with this uh, graphite design chat. I'm gonna throw you in another cheeky number okay. and then we're gonna see what other numbers. See if we can really push the numbers because you're hitting a, a pretty decent regarding uh, ball speed sure. and then maximizing all the launch conditions. So I'm gonna try and get a little bit more couple, more ball speed out there all and right. see, what, see if we can do it. The way you're loading it right now, it's pretty consistent. So I'm gonna try your black TR. Okay. Ventus. Now, obviously, these are upgraded shafts, yeah. right? So, if you didn't want to spend that extra money and get an upgraded, we have a really good stock offerings um, with your hazardists and and the numbers, the, the shafts that you're pretty familiar with that yep. really go well with it. Okay. But with this, for this purpose, I want to get you in this shaft to see if we can just push it out there a little bit more. Sounds good. Wind's taking that a little bit. Yep. Straight how did that, good, how did that shaft feel though? I mean. Obviously less active than the others, but still smooth. I mean, I didn't feel like it was too heavy or anything like that. Okay. So hit a couple more. Okay. That was the penetrating one. Yep. All right, 165. Your numbers were so tight. I've, we're getting a couple of little squirrely ones just to squeeze it out there yep. and ending up about 20 yards offline. Right. For the sake of this fitting, I want to put you in the titanium. Okay. Uh, I want to get you hitting that one and see if we can get any better numbers out of that. Absolutely. And then go from there. Yeah, let's give it a shot. Yeah, Thank you. Even those low heel misses, I mean, the wind is just drastically yeah. changing what it would be. The feel is consistent. Yeah. Like even on that heel strike, it still feels, obviously I know that I'm hitting it on the heel, but it still feels like I'm getting, you know, a little more center than you normally would yeah. with something else. And what I like about it is it's, the sound and feel com combination, you really have to like give it a go Yeah. before you make a decision. You just have to get it in your hands and hit it. Right. Because you, you might be on the range, you might not like the sound, you might love the sound. Right. It just depends. We need to get it in your hands to really get it going. Yeah, of course. All right, so looking at the data just based on, uh, before we hit this titanium, based on the data, we're looking at 275 carry and your, your spin rate is in 2500. And then you're launching at 10. So all of those numbers are like right in, in the realm of where we want it to be for optimal launch. Um, when it comes to ball speed, you're averaging 164, basically. Right. 163.7. Yep. 164, you basically said, I'm in around 160. Right. 161 sometimes. Yep. Well, we're at 164 before we even start the titanium. <laughs> yeah. So obviously this is gonna be that little higher launch, okay. higher spinning model. Okay. Um, but I'm still intrigued because it might still be the benefit for you. Right, of course. All right, so yeah. let's go ahead and hit some of this and then we'll compare numbers at the end. Okay. Slightly low off the hill. Yeah, I'd say a little bit. Yeah. Not, not upset with the flight though. I... Yeah, the flight definitely came up just that little bit more. It's definitely one of the things I've noticed, I guess even 
from now hitting titanium and the carbon head is that feel actually still very consistent. The look is consistent too. Yeah, that, that's what we designed it for. We wanted to get that premium look no matter what model you went for. Yeah, it doesn't seem like this head just got way bigger all exactly, of a sudden. Yeah, yeah very, yeah. it's nice. It's good to look at. Felt good. Okay, launching is come up. Okay. So is your spin. So this is exactly why we want to hit both models because yes, I am given a conclusion in my head of thinking, all right, I think you already should be in the carbon. Sure, yeah. However, it's not always the case. However, it's proven to be true after those two shots. So right. let's let's keep hitting. Yep. Let's see if we need to switch out shafts, which I'm going to, to see if we can drop that spin down. Okay. And then go from there and see if we can beat the numbers off the carbon. I'd like to see you in about 11 or 12 degree of launch. Yep, okay. Um, so whether we could put you in a 10 and a half degree carbon, however, that will jump up the spin in the carbon. And I, there's always, whenever you change something, there's a cause and a reaction. Of course. So if you yep. do something here, it's gonna react here. That so makes you have sense. to take your best it's numbers possible. never just, possibly. yeah, it's never just one thing really. As you can see, it's just launching that little bit higher. And that's what it's designed to do. Yep. It's, it's got designed that jump. to get a little bit higher launch, a little bit more of a spin for those golfers who struggle to potentially generate enough spin. Okay, yep. Uh, so they're now in the window of 2,000, 2,400, 10 to 14 degree of launch. Right, okay. Where they could have been eight and spinning it at 1,800. Sure, max. yep. All right. I'm going to tweak it because I don't like the spin that we're generating off of it. Sure, okay. So I'm going to put you in a, potentially the TR black to drop okay. that spin down. Yeah. And then I'm going to open up the face. Okay. And see what we go from there. And opening the face will do what? So whenever you open the face, you close the club face. So you make it a draw bias. Okay, yep. And whenever you decrease loft, yep. you open the face and make it a fade bias. Yep. So whenever okay. you do something with that lie angle, uh, by uh, putting a degree up or yep. degree down. Changing the face angle Changing a bit. the face angle. So rule of thumb, whenever you increase loft, you close. Any time you decrease loft, you open. Right. And I mean, this even travels through tour players, right? It's all kind yep. of in that adjustability and what exactly. works for them. Yeah. And we tell, we tell those guys, they already know it. Yep. But sometimes they might just need a refresher here and there. <laughs> yeah. like, I mean, a lot of people do. There you go, you held the ball position, and um, yeah. the ball flight a little bit better a there, it stayed yeah. straight. Through the wind. And... Yep, that was, a, that was a better ball flight there. But this is why we, we didn't want to do those five different drivers. You've got two demographics of golfers here. Yeah. Fade bias, sure. uh, the one that goes left to right. Yep. We've got that one here for the titanium and put that little bit more spin and a little bit higher launch. And then when you got that carbon, it's for more penetrating ball flights to get that spin down, low spin head. So we've we've covered, we believe, every single demographic of golfer with these two drivers. Of course, and then and then that plays into the adjustability on the hosel too. Exactly, so fine tuning it. it. Fine tuning it, exactly. So you have that six way adjustable hosel. Yep. So if you feel like you're getting a too much of a fade bias and you're launching it a little low, crank up the loft. Yep. You can do whatever you want with it, it's just that easy. So you launched that at 13 and a half. Okay and your dynamic loft was 18. So what I mean by, for golfers that don't understand dynamic loft, you're not the only one. <laughs> right. So you have static loft, and then you have dynamic loft. So dynamic loft is when, at impact, is how much loft the face has is at impact. Sure. So if you put your hands forward, your dynamic loft is gonna be lower yep. because your, your static loft is, is in the correlation. Yeah. Uh, dynamic loft is when that face is at impact. That's your best one yet. Yeah, that flight came out nice. So looking at those numbers, the last one was your best one at 2,900, 268 uh, and 160 ball speed. Yep. Listening to you and then seeing your numbers with the carbon, right. it is just shadow of a doubt that you would be into the carbon sure. at nine degree with that TP shaft. Of course, yeah. Compared to that titanium. But you can see how the characteristics, you can see how the launch comes up a little Immediately, bit. Immediately, yeah. With the titanium. Right. With that uh, carbon, it's that little bit more of a penetrating ball flight. Right, yeah. A little bit less spin piercing through it. I mean, we got a windy day today. Yeah, uh, we do. And it just keeps going throughout the wind. It doesn't get caught up in it. Right. The titanium for you 
was the one that got caught up in the wind just that little bit more. Definitely. However, with other golfers, it could be that piercing one that we're looking right. for. Right. I met well, yeah, especially somebody who kind of launches it low right away to see that launch come up in the first couple of swings was, I mean, cool to see and obviously maybe not what we're fitting into here, but super beneficial for somebody yeah, who needs that. Yeah, 100%. And what I want to do is I want to compare both of them. So if we just look at this, you're looking at 255 carry compared to your 275 on right. average. Yep. However, you maxed out at 286 with like that 2300 yep. and 165, basically 166 ball speed. Right. And again, you say you were saying that it was 160. 160. Yeah. So you're up to six miles an hour, but just that. Yeah. It's kind of nuts. I mean, that's that's really good. What, one thing that I always pay attention to as well is just side spin. Yep. So I like to be within three to five hundred revs of side spin. You're on average one three six. Yeah. Right. So you're about six to seven yards offline right. on that right hand side of that fairway. So you're bang in the middle of the fairway. With the carbon. With the carbon. Right. When it comes to the titanium, you're in that 400 revolutions of side spin, which is still within the realms that it's acceptable. However, I would never ever say don't go away from that carbon. <laughs> yeah. from that, those numbers. So that seems like the right Based choice. on those two, I would fit you in that TP shaft, nine degree ahead carbon. Um, and happy dinger and you yeah, know and just like, smash smash them all day long yeah i mean obviously we're fortunate enough to be out here and getting all this data um guys the best thing that you could possibly do stop into one of our worldwide golf shops retail locations but guys it's super important to get fit for these drivers um go give it a try stop into one of our worldwide golf shops retail locations and see what's best for you you need to hit it just bottom line have to you, try you Absolutely. need to try it yeah sure. it was it was very good all right well thank you so much yeah, man. appreciate it